Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome. I am the Crypto Crow, and this is going to be a video that you're definitely going to want to watch through to the end if you have any interest in Ethereum or Cardano. And I've got a lot of supporting information here. I've got graphics. I've got all kinds of stuff to basically make the case that I'm presenting. And I want to preface all of it by basically saying that I don't have any problems with Ethereum. I'm not an Ethereum hater. If anything, Ethereum was my first love. It was my first relationship in cryptocurrency. And it didn't take very long for me to turn that relationship into a multitude of others simultaneously as I used Ethereum to explore so many, many other cryptos. Uh, and so it is what it is. Uh, but, and I still use Ethereum today, as many of us do, no matter what crypto projects we love. But we're going to go ahead and we're going to dive into this because this may get a little long. I don't know. We'll see. You already know when you watch this how long this is. So we'll see where we end up. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to go into this uh, graphic that I made uh, and it's longer. I'm going to have to be moving this up as we go through. But basically, we're going to be we're going to start off with some uh, some data. OK, and this is all data that I went through and I pulled out of everything from coin market cap, uh, historical data to just a whole bunch of different resources. So back in 2015, Ethereum launched. OK. So we're talking seven years ago. <laughs> so it's been around seven years already for the most part. And it launched uh, as a proof of work blockchain. So, you know, a proof of work blockchain that has now been ultimately converted after all of these years to a proof of stake blockchain, because quite frankly, POS is better. I mean, it's just better across the board. It's more energy efficient, obviously. It, uh, you know, I mean, there's just, it's a, there are a lot of reasons why it's better, but they still don't have it right. <laughs> but we'll get to that. By June 16th, Ethereum's price has got, had gone up to $21.52, okay? And its market cap was $1.2 billion, which is pretty sig significant. By January of 2018, and keep in mind, prior to this, our Cardano obviously didn't even exist yet. Uh, but remember, Ethereum launched with smart contracts. Okay, that was the whole meat of it. I mean, it was basically saying, hey, this is like Bitcoin in that it's a cryptocurrency. It's on a completely different algorithm, ERC-20. Uh, everything's ERC-20 based. And uh, it's coded on a comp using Solidity, a different programming language. It's faster. It's better. It's got smart contracts. Okay, you can do so many other things on this than you could with Bitcoin. So it was first to market with 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 uh, with smart contracts, which is great. Now in 2018, uh, it peaked out at around $1,291. Now, in some of these cases, you and I both are going to know that it, market peaks and the and the the prices of which are going to be relative to the exchanges. Okay, there isn't necessarily a universal peak price. So depending on what resource you use, it'll say, oh, it peaked here or it peaked there. Uh, but on January 2018, we were looking at a $1,291 Ethereum. And that was at a $125 billion market cap. Pretty substantial. Okay, pretty substantial. Now, at this point, you know, July 2017, Cardano was just two bucks. It only had a $480 million market cap, all right? And that was a little bit around the same time Ethereum was at around $21.52. Now, you'll also know that basically right after, I mean, not long after Ethereum went live, it had to hard fork. It had to leave Ethereum Classic behind with the new uh, the new version of Ethereum because there were a lot of issues associated with it, and there was a major hack on an early adopting DAO that basically stole a bunch of money. And so the devs got together and they said, "How do we get this back? How do we work this out?" Well, we're going to have to fork the blockchain, and we're going to have to create a new version of it and do a whole bunch of stuff, which they did. But in the at the at, on the same token. They had ultimately had like six other hard forks, six or seven other hard forks that that are much less more much more or less well known. Okay, <laughs> so I tongue tie myself. 
But by January of 2018, same time frame as uh, Ethereum hitting $1,291, Cardano basically reached its first big milestone, which was $1.33, at a market capitalization of about $28.8 billion. Okay, so it, it is pretty close to, at this point. But remember, at this time, Cardano still didn't have much of anything. It didn't have smart contracts. It didn't have staking. It didn't have any of that stuff yet. It was still more or less an idea with a bunch of people doing a lot of research, a lot of peer, uh, peer to peer research, peer review research, all that fun stuff. And it just, it hadn't amounted to much yet. Uh, they were still a lot of bugs and Daedalus wallet for that matter. And we didn't have a lot of light wallets yet either. We didn't have a lot of anything at this time where it was, it had reached a dollar 33. Okay. Now, it went up Ethereum from, from its original peak to its next peak, which was about November, 2021. It hit about 4,860 bucks. Again, in some, in some cases it went up higher than that, depending on the time frame. but it ultimately had gone up about 125% uh, in terms of market capitalization. Okay, 125% to the new 2021 peak. And, it, it went up higher than that, but so did Ethereum. Again, these are the this is the resource data that I, I was able to pull. We know Ethereum was higher than $3. It was like $3.40 or something, and uh, Ethereum was the same. But that's not re really what's important. What's important is the overall growth scale. Because by this next peak for a Cardano in August of 2021 at $3, it was up $91.5 billion in market capitalization, up over 216%. So you can see that if you were to compare Ethereum from inception and Cardano from inception, ultimately it starts to wane. So Ethereum's market capitalization has been going down every cycle in terms of its growth percentage, year over year, cycle over cycle. Whereas Cardano has been picking up steam substantially. And what we're seeing is, and I even say here, Ethereum's losing steam, Cardano's building steam. So Cardano is building and building and building. Now, in 2019, staking went live on Cardano with Shelly. And ultimately that began giving way to people being able to buy Cardano or ADA stake it to a node and start generating a return, which was substantial. And it, it meant a lot, I think, and it, it's gonna continue meaning a lot. And remember at the time, the goal was just to get to a thousand nodes, okay? Charles would say time and time again, if we just get to a thousand nodes, we'll be one of the most decentralized blockchains out there. Well, we're at almost, of about 3,000 nodes to, nodes to date, and that's at this near bottom position in a bear market the number of nodes has not fallen. We have not fallen in the number of nodes by, I don't know, maybe 100 since the most recent peak. What does that mean? Well, that means that people are believing in Cardano. They're not getting rid of their nodes. They're not reducing their pledges. They're not doing anything. They're holding firm because they know that Cardano is still in its infancy in many, many ways. And even with that being the case, it's still starting to build steam and outperform Ethereum. And I don't care what any of these VCs say or what these VCs think, it's all in the numbers. You just look at the numbers. Now, to date, okay, to date, Ethereum has had over 315,157 commits on GitHub. These are development commits. Cardano, on the other hand, has had more than double that with 899,102 GitHub commits, recently winning an award, and I'll show you, I'll, I'll show you some of this stuff uh, when we get through this graph, or this graphic. But ultimately, Card there is no other project that's more developed than Cardano right now. I mean, it, it, is, it is first in development milestones, it's first in pretty much everything when it comes to GitHub commits and so forth which is a pretty big deal, is it not? Uh, and I find it odd that you st we still see venture capitalists out there still basically saying that Cardano is some kind of ghost chain. What are all of these people, thousands of developers and engineers, what are they all working on if it's just a ghost chain? 
And if it's a ghost chain, how come we're starting to see all of the same functionality we're seeing on other blockchains, but it just happens to be much more secure, faster, uh, and, and with a lot of other functionality uh, than, than other blockchains. So that's just a, a part of it. So as we continue to move down, uh, you can see that Ethereum's uh, proof of stake conversion and end up Ethereum 2.0 created a lot of controversy that for whatever reason has kind of waned and shut down, even though there are a lot of issues with it. If you try to do ETH 2.0 searches in Google, you're still gonna get a lot of old information because either there's just not a lot being written about it now in the bear market because there's still problems to be fixed as it relates to the Ethereum 2.0 conversion, but some of the other issues are uh, that it, you know, it's known now that it adds censorship. I mean, it's possible to censor the blockchain to some degree because of Ethereum 2.0, which I don't know if that was a planned feature or if that's a, uh, a symptom of some of the things that they had to change. And that's not good. A decentralized blockchain should not offer built-in censorship. That's something you would see on like a centralized blockchain. And typically when you have something like that, that's what, you know, people that want to keep other people quiet or restricted or limited, that's what they would use. Not something like a decentralized blockchain like Ethereum. So that, that and I don't know a whole lot about that yet because I don't really spend a lot of time diving into Ethereum anymore. To me, Ethereum is like, you know, grandpa you know what i mean and you know there's there's just a lot more happening now but to each their own I, again i don't have any problems with it but it is what it is and on top of that your stakes when you stake to the ethereum nodes now your stakes at this point are still locked up and you can't pull them out and I, to my the last i saw which was maybe a week or two ago they haven't even announced when you're going to be able to get your staked ethereum back yet nobody really knows and it's making a lot of people squeamish because people are, you know, through the bear market, you know, fine. Uh, you know, however long it takes, maybe nobody cares at this point. But how many people staked their Ethereum to a node and weren't able to do anything about it at the peak of the last market? And what's funny is, is even with that, people were able to pull their stakes off of Cardano nodes because your Cardano stakes are not locked up. It's almost like working a, a, a new job where you get paid every couple of weeks. Typically, you don't get your first check for a while because you put in the work and then you get paid. You put in the work and then you get paid. And if you were to either quit or get fired, you typically have one more check coming. Well, in Cardano and the staking uh, methods for Cardano, it's almost like, you you know, you stake, you have to wait a couple of weeks ultimately to get your first check. But if you pull, um, you know, let's say I've got, you know, 20,000 uh, ADA on a node and I need to use that money for something and I pull it out, I sell it off and I get it in the cash and I go buy a bike or whatever. All that means is you get less of a reward at the end of that epoch cycle uh, as it relates to, you know, when you took that ADA out. So you're free to use your ADA and do whatever you want with it. It's not locked in for good. You don't have to wait for a certain date. That's typically, you know, when you have to lock something up, when you have to lock your capital up into something, to me, that screams, we need this, uh, we need this capital, we need this locked up, um, more than you do, uh, you know, in the sense that they're trying to control their market for, for reasons that generally are not very good is what I see from history, but that's another issue. Um, as far as transactions per second, now it's, you know, the data I found said that Ethereum can run 15 to 25 transactions per second, which is okay. It's not that great. But the problem is, is that when Ethereum is in high use, and, and things start to get bottlenecked, you can wait hours for these transactions. You can wait days. I know at some point there are people that I'm pretty sure will wait like a day or two for transactions to con conclude. Um, and that's, the, you know, the waiting f hours or days for confirmations on a blockchain just because it's uh, bottlenecked through high use. I mean, how many of you guys remember even early on with Crypto Kitties and what that did to the network? I mean, that's, that brought the network to a crawl. And so what we're seeing more of now in terms of volume is we're seeing DeFi applications. Well, these DeFi applications are, are popular on Ethereum because, well, uh, there's, I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on on Ethereum. It's had seven years to start building a lot of it, right? 
Um, so, and if you look at Cardano, on the other hand, uh, on September 2021, this is after, this is after the last peak, the most recent peak, then we got smart contracts. So we still peaked out at $3 and it was about $3.40. Both of these numbers are off, okay? But at about $3.40, with a $91.5 billion market capitalization, that was at the peak of a market before it even had smart contracts in play. Now, what does that tell you? It's growth by market cap, cycle to cycle, is starting to outperform the growth of Ethereum, and it still, <laughs> it still hasn't even launched smart contracts yet. And by this point, 2021, you know, Ethereum's been around with, for six years with, market, uh, with smart contracts. So what that tells me is it's a, we're in and out with the old and in with the new scenario. And it's a scenario that venture capitalists absolutely are fearful of. And these venture capitalists that are spending all this money <clears throat> on Ethereum-based applications because it was first to market and they've invested so much and they have all these applications or projects that have either launched or are in the middle of development or close to the end of their development cycles before they launch. Uh, you know, they're also pumping a lot of money into marketing these things. So like we've seen time and time again, when you've got venture capital money or you've got anybody with money and you're willing to pay to play in the media space, what happens? The media typically gets real loyal to the ones that are writing their checks. And so what we've seen is, is we've seen time and time again, to this very day, we see Cardano excluded from the argument when it's the biggest threat to the Ethereum ecosystem, not to mention everything else out there. I mean, let's be real about it. And so we see this a lot. I've been trying to point some of that out recently in, in you know shorter videos. But your stakes, your staking isn't locked up. You can stake on the crow node right now, pull it off tomorrow if you want, and then you're not you're not committed for any long term lockup. That's just the way it is. Now, it says the data says Cardano is capable of 250 transactions per second, which isn't bad. That's that's actually really really good. But we're not really seeing that yet, right? We're not really seeing 250 transactions per second. Uh, a lot of that, I'm sure, is, well, some of it could be limitations in the technology so far because we're still waiting on Hydra, which is going to change everything, and obviously we're waiting on Voltaire. So we still have protocols for Cardano still to launch, and whether we're getting 250 transactions per second on Cardano right now or not, which really I don't think we are, we're probably getting somewhere between the 15 to 25, just like Ethereum, because that's just kind of where the market is right now. Are we capable of getting more? Yeah, I believe we are, and we're and it's pretty quick too. You know, I can send an Ethereum transaction and it might take five minutes, 10 minutes to, to confirm. I send a Cardano transaction from wallet to wallet and it's like 30 seconds. So it's much, much quicker for these uh, confirmations. And I'm pretty sure a block is minted on Cardano every 20 seconds. So every time one of those blocks is minted, you're getting confirmations. So it's much quicker, but Hydra is gonna change everything on a grand scale. I mean, Hydra, ultimately the goal, and keep in mind when the, first co when the conversation first started about Cardano and Hydra, the conversation was about just getting to a thousand nodes and getting to a million transactions per second. But Hydra as it is, is the ultimate goal is to turn every node into 1000 transactions per second. If you've got 3,000 nodes, I mean, we can just do the math right here. Um, you've got 3,000 nodes, multiply that by 1,000, and you have 3 million transactions per second, okay? 3 million transactions per second. Multiply that by, uh, oh yeah, I mean, that's a second. 3 million transactions per second. Is there anything faster than that? I don't think there's anything faster than that. I think I extrapolated that out at one point and I think I got to like 86 billion uh, transactions a day or something, which ultimately if you have a truly decentralized blockchain capable of even a billion transactions a day, you're cleaning house, you're cleaning house through and through. Now you throw some of this other functionality on top of that uh, from your interoperability protocols and in your, your, your side chains and all of this other stuff that is coming. 
I, can you, I mean, what blockchain can, can stand up to that realistically? I mean, and, I, and I'm asking you wholeheartedly, uh, what, what can hold up to that? So outside of this too, you've got strong venture capital interest due to first market bias, which we see. I mean, every time you look at crypto media, crypto news, we see this bias. Um, it, where they have millions invested in the ecosystem and in media and so forth and so on, which ultimately helps them kind of fight the battle for, you know, market share to some degree, because if they're able to control the media narrative, well, I mean, what do we know about media narrative? If you can buy it, you can own it. And if you own it, you can control a lot, right? Uh, and you can guide things to some degree. But while we're still seeing this narrative pump Ethereum's price and maintain its, its, uh, its, I don't know, viability, I guess, to some degree, while these VCs are struggling, trying to figure out how they're going to get the money they've invested out of the projects, uh, that there's going to be a transition with that. That's my, that's my opinion. There's going to be a transition. And a lot of this money, I believe, is already starting to kind of migrate into the Cardano ecosystem. We just haven't launched a lot of these projects yet. And then finally, you know, Cardano's focused on enterprise level and retail level adoption. And, and ultimately it's trying to provide systems for economies, countries, people, governments, basically anybody that can, um, anybody that can utilize a decentralized blockchain of this nature, uh, which is pretty much everybody. It's just about getting these kind of these applications that are going to help bring on major use cases uh, all over the place. But even if we had them right now, they wouldn't benefit from the full functionalities planned for Cardano because we need Hydra first. When we get Hydra, I believe that that is when we're gonna start seeing some, some of the most significant changes to the Cardano ecosystem that's absolutely gonna change the game across the board. Now, let's look at some other data here because there's a lot more uh, and, and hopefully I'm not boring you and this is all making sense because I, this is all, to me, this is all really, really important, which is why I spent hours today pulling a lot of this stuff together uh, because it's stuff that I think everybody needs to be aware of. Now, currently Cardano's trading at $1,224. That's not terrible. Uh, Cardano is at, at 26 cents. And, you know, I have a friend of mine and, and you know, and, and a lot of other people like, how did you know it was going to go lower? How did you know it was going to go lower? And I told everybody when I started to average back in, I averaged back in at 50 cents with plans to buy at, a, at another low and then really go big uh, on the next buy. And I haven't done that yet, but I did start to average in. And and I'm very happy with, with the fact that I got my Cardano where it's at, even though I could buy double what I originally bought. That's fine, too. I'm not really worried about that because I, I'm more interested in making sure I have what I want um, before things really take off. And even though I believe that we're going to be down into the teens, this is my opinion, okay? But I believe we're going to hit the teens in Cardano's price uh, in 2023. I've done videos before where I'm calling 2023 the year of the bottom. And, and you know, a lot of people scoff at this. We'll, we'll see. Maybe I'm wrong. Hopefully I'm not, but that's what I'm seeing. Now, if we look at leaders in AVG dev activity contributors counted in 2021, Cardano was number one by a mile. Third to Cardano was Polkadot and fourth was Ethereum. Fifth was Solana. I don't know how or why, but there you have it. <coughs> we see Filecoin on this list, Cosmos, uh, and then Bitcoin towards the bottom, chain link down at the bottom. These are, this is GitHub commits on Ethereum, okay? This is a trading view chart that shows the GitHub commits. You can see it, this is an all-time chart. And you can see right here, 335,000 to date as of December 22nd. We can see the same data for Cardano. This is ADA's chart, 899,102 to date, okay? And there's, there's just so much data associated with how Cardano is, is closing in on technical superiority and market capitalization superiority. I mean, it's just happening, but it's happening inch by inch. Think about it. Cardano has had smart contracts for a year. Ethereum's had smart contracts for seven years. And, and, it, and it's, you know, the supply metrics are different. 
in, in effect, you know, Ethereum has been uh, inflationary for a while. Now, apparently, they're burning tokens to try and offset a lot of that stuff. But I don't really know how much that's going to help at this point. It, it probably will. Uh, but we'll have to see how those numbers really officially play out. But the but also at the same time, Cardano's out. Like there is no there are, there are no major uh, venture capitalist groups or uh, major whales that hold fifty or fifty one percent of the token supply. That's a big part of its decentralized nature. The, the 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 vast majority of these tokens are distributed throughout the world. They're being held by over what 1.2, 1.3 million different active addresses, probably more than that. But an active address is an address that has been utilized for something typically within the last 24 hours. Some say, you know, within the past 7 days. But these addresses hold Cardano, and it's a big, big deal. And those numbers are continuing to grow. Those metrics are growing. But what we're seeing here is the like the biggest, the biggest uh, application on the on the Ethereum network right now is Uniswap version three with two billion dollars, two billion dollars worth of, of volume. Uh, and you you continue to move down, and it's all DeFi applications. With you know, in sixth place, you have a one point one billion dollar Pirates of the Arland. I have never even heard of this before, and its market capitalization is huge. Above, like, is this an error? <laughs> I mean, it's down fourteen percent right now. Um, yeah, something's not right with the number of unique active wallets interacting with DApps. Yeah, something about this is not right. Six? I don't think so. There, there. This is an inflated garbage thing. Something about this isn't right. So that data has got to be skewed because you're talking like this. This, this uh, Ethereum-based collectible is not worth more than Uniswap version two or Sushi. No, I don't buy it. Somebody somehow somebody's messing with that. Um, maybe these pirates are trying to pirate somebody else's crypto by like playing with numbers. Look at that. It's a total flat line over here with volume at $31.5 million. Um, yeah, somebody, it looks like somebody's trying to inflate some market value, but anyway, to each their own. Um, and that's not to say that people don't, don't or can't or may not, I don't know, but that's possible on any blockchain. So it's not a, a, the fault of Ethereum. But if we look at uh, if we look at Cardano, min swap at thirty three point six eight million JPEG store, which is a marketplace, pretty nice one. That's five hundred and thirty nine. That's balance. You've got volume eight hundred and seventeen thousand. Not even a million dollars in volume every day on min swap. You got two hundred and thirty six thousand dollars worth of volume being traded on JPEG store. Sunday swap one hundred. So the numbers are low. A we're in a bear market. B there aren't any significant use cases on Cardano just yet because there there is some truth to the to the fact that Cardano is not the easiest blockchain to build on and when you're talking about microtransactions it's almost pointless you can't really build anything to utilize microtransactions on Cardano yet. You can do things with a side chain, but that's that's still a, com a com complex issue. Uh, and you know, I know this because of my own development on on SoBlox, my uh, social media platform. And you know, we're there are going to be some issues if you know until Hydra is my point. You know, my game, my Wargrim, my my tabletop game. There are issues with developing uh, things like this. So right now we're limited to ultimately DeFi and NFTs to some degree, even though you've got major prog projects like World Mobile Token, you've got Cornucopius uh, with the Kopi Token and things like that. And they're all building, but they're building different things and they don't necessarily involve microtransactions just yet. And while they may be in the plans, just like with SoBlox, it's not very viable just yet, but when Hydra launches and it continues to lower these transactions, uh, these transaction fees, and it and increases throughput, makes everything faster, better, cheaper, all this other stuff, it's good that, like I said, it's all just one more element of how the game is going to change. Um, you know, we can look at these at the data here: total staked on Cardano, twenty five point four two billion, seventy four point three five percent of the total supply is staked right now. That's insane. This is Crow node. This is my node. You can see I, I have this hearted 
Um, you can't really see it that clearly because it's all the way down at the bottom. You can see the line, but I have 22 million ADA uh, actively staked to my node right now, which is fantastic. Average ROI for this e uh, ROS right now for the Epochs four and a quarter. It goes up and down, um, but on average, it's around four and a quarter, four and a half, which is pretty decent, especially considering it's consistent. Um, live stake. Uh, lifetime ROS, uh, there were some other metrics without opening the window, but anyway, total staking addresses. So, okay, so this is a metric, total staking addresses, 1.24 million. That's just staking addresses. That's not the number of active addresses. The active address is gonna be significantly higher than that. But we've got 2,952 pools right now, okay? There was a little over 3,000 at one point. And this is some other data. Um, you can see when you're talking about decentralization, one of the big things about decentralization, and it's a question I've always had, is the nodes operating the Cardano blockchain are what really make it decentralized. And these are all over the world. And so if everything is on Amazon AWS and a Amazon decides, hmm, you know, we were told by some higher ups that we need to shut this down because we don't like the blockchain because of this, that, or another thing. And they can just shut down all of it, just like they have with different apps, like political apps, you know, social media applications and things like that. They've done it already. So we know that's a big thing. 37% of the current Cardano staking nodes are built on Amazon AWS. Then you've got 14% on DigitalOcean, you've got some on Google Cloud, uh, OVH, Microsoft Azure, you've got a whole bunch of different ones here. So it is it is decentralized for sure. There's one metric on here where they're, they're not on data centers. You've got 5% that are on other, um, I don't know, Hetzmer, DigitalOcean, uh, yeah, I don't know where that is. There's one of these one of these on here, and it was a pretty substantial number, but for whatever reason, I don't know where it went. Uh, and it was basically saying these aren't on it. These aren't these are basically like running out of somebody's house. And I thought it was like pretty decent percentage, but anyway, that's what we want to see, right? We want to see these. We want to see this spread all over the place. I would definitely love to see the Amazon AWS much much lower, and all of these numbers a lot bigger. Um, I wonder if there's a way to convince people to do that. That's something I might have to talk to my developer about. Uh, I know where we're hosted. It's not on Amazon. Uh, so anyway, yeah, that's that, but there's a lot of different metrics and in, in, in information. This is the crow node. So if you, you know, if you like the content that I put out on Cardano or anything else, just news, I mean, we've won some awards and fun stuff. 1K blocks, 100 blocks, 10 blocks, first block, all that kind of fun stuff. I like those ribbons, but our metrics are pretty solid. Uh, even in the bear market, I have not touched my pledge. I have absolutely no intentions whatsoever on touching any of that. So here's another little fun fact here. In particular, as of December 6th, the Cardano smart contract feature accounted for the highest growth rate compared to 2021 at 394%, hitting the milestone of 4,445. That's the number of smart contracts since inception in 2021. And it's growing consistently day by day by day. Native tokens on the platform accounted for the second highest growth rate at 192%, hitting the 7.3 million mark, or 7.3 million native tokens that have been created on the Cardano blockchain. Elsewhere in 2022, <coughs> Cardano's transactions amounted to 56.9 million, representing a surge of 139%, while wallets hit 3.8 million, growing 47%. Listen, I don't know what to say other than since 2017, I have been uh, showing people, uh, educating people on, on Cardano, on, uh, you know, on the blockchain as a whole, as it compares and relates to other blockchains, I, I can't stress enough how much I'm waiting for Hydra to launch because Hydra truly, I, I truly believe Hydra is gonna absolutely just change the paradigm of crypto for everyone. And once Hydra does launch and the new metrics, the new numbers come out, the throughput, scalability, functionality, all of these fun things, lower microtransactional uh, 
possibilities i will say at that point uh because it's just difficult to do now even with with cardano with the ada being much lower in price we have to get this down uh significantly to be able to do a lot of the things that i think are going to drive up the market capitalization of cardano as a whole and hydra is going to play a significant role in that and especially if you're talking about side chain activity and you're just a lot of these other things that related to cardano we are we are in what is ultimately close to a bottom of a bear market. We're gonna see this bottom in 2023. We're gonna see the next halving for Bitcoin in 2024. Probably not gonna see the next peak of the market until 2025, if we even have just a peak. We might have a peak and a drop. We might have a peak and another peak. I don't know yet, we're not there. But I know that we have years left to develop on Cardano, get all of these different things launched on the blockchain and really start creating magic and that is ultimately what i'm waiting for ethereum started off with crypto kitties and there's a lot of gobbledygook there's a lot of garbage on the ethereum blockchain because it's easier to build on anybody can grab a solidity book and learn how to you know script some cool stuff and write a big hold uh insecure uh, smart contract and launch some DeFi application and it all definitely benefits ethereum to some degree whether it passes or fails but ultimately, we're not seeing a lot of that stuff on Cardano because it is a little bit more complex to build on. It does take a more senior level engineer, I believe, in a lot of degrees to build on Cardano, which is also why we're seeing more higher quality applications being built on Cardano. And I think that ultimately, we're going to see much, much more coming down the pipe. And I think that if you're holding Cardano and 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 you can see the changes in um, in the market, uh, you can, if you sit in a, sit around on your own and you crunch all the numbers and you compare the two side by side, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to see that the growth of Cardano is soon to drastically outweigh the growth of Ethereum, which to me means at some point in the future, whether it's by this next peak, which it very well could be, we'll have to wait and see, or maybe even the following peak, uh, Cardano, in my opinion, is definitely going to flip Ethereum. And I think it's 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 going to be soon when a lot of these venture capitalists that have been in Ethereum, if they're smart and they have any technical understanding whatsoever and they start crunching these numbers and they see the technology as it's unfolding, if they were smart, they would start hedging some of the potential future, future losses that they've invested into the Ethereum and the Ethereum, Ethereum ecosystem and start putting that into the building and the development of the Cardano ecosystem. And that's not necessarily me just being biased for Cardano, I have my impression of Cardano that I've had since 2017 because of everything that I've read, all of the research that I had done years ago that, that I understood the vision and I understood the goal to a large degree. And so far to date, all I've ever seen is successful milestone hit after one after another after another, and we're still not even finished. What do you think is gonna happen if we peaked out at, at $3.30 or $3.40 before we even had smart contracts? What do you think is gonna be different in the market capitalization of Cardano between now and the next peak once Hydra, smart contracts, and everything else is in the play? $8, $12, $15, $20, where do you think we're gonna go? I think the sky is absolutely the limit for the 2025 peak, if that's in fact where we peak out. And um, you know, it is what it is. Doesn't mean I, I have any disdain or dislike for Ethereum. I just have a disdain and a dislike for a lot of the Ethereum moon boys and the venture capitalists that in my opinion, use shady tactics, tactics in their money to try and oppress and hold down superior technology that they deem as competition, which ultimately it is and it's gonna win. What side of the fence you're on when it does is entirely up to you. Until next time, guys, crow your coins. I'll see you soon.